In this video, I'm looking at post-market OS on a Google Pixel 3a with the Plasma Mobile environment. At the time of this video, I'm using an Edge release, which we see here, but it is very functional. And so I'll go over a few of the default applications and features available for the Google Pixel 3a. Here is the login screen for PostMarket OS with Plasma Mobile. Right now I'll note the battery is at 99% and the brightness is at about 50%. So if you want to pay attention to the battery life, we can start there. From the lock screen, we have the default password 147147. There is a welcome to PostMarket OS greeter that will walk you through the setup of the device with the basic looks and connectivity. Here I've already set up the Wi-Fi connection and there is a SIM card inserted with proper APNs detected automatically. So here, looking at the battery life, and we can see that the battery is in good condition, though I have noticed on this particular Pixel 3a that battery drain is quite quick. So that might differ depending on your physical device. So from the home screen, we have the app drawer if we swipe up. There is a search feature. You can search for apps and you can also swipe down from the top and search general things, including doing simple maths. Swiping down from the top, we get the quick settings. So Wi-Fi is working, obviously, and the flashlight is working. There's also sound settings, and I found that the sound is generally working quite well at the moment on this device. We'll get into more of the details later. There is a screen recorder available. And after recording the screen, we can press on the notification to open the screen recording. However, playback did not seem to function. Night color will give your screen night mode, which does work, and that's a great feature. The screenshot function, much like the screen recorder, will provide a static image that you can then view, and it seems to be functioning at the time of this release. There are a few other features that I'll get into more later. But first, let's look at some of the default applications and how they function. 
Angelfish is the default browser. And we see that, of course, Wi-Fi is working here. If I unmute this video, it does actually play the audio as expected, and the volume controls are working. Switching off Wi-Fi, I should now be connected to the mobile data connection. This is functioning, but there might be a few tweaks or quirks involved when switching between the two connections, as seen here. Now reconnected to the mobile data, it is functioning as expected. Next, let's look at the camera app. Although the app is installed and it looks like it asks for permissions when you first open it, it was not able to connect to the hardware and it is not functional as a camera. The front-facing camera is also not working. The clock app allows you to set the time, timers, use a stopwatch, and set alarms as needed. Discover is like the software center for Plasma Mobile. Here you can install various applications as you would normally, as well as system updates. Here I've forgotten to actually press on the Wi-Fi again. This is an issue that I've noticed in Plasma Mobile, especially after rebooting the phone. Index is the file explorer, and we can navigate it as you see on the screen. So now the phone app, when making calls and receiving calls, I was able to get audio coming out of the loudspeaker, in fact only the loudspeaker. However, the microphone on this device was not working, and so if you're making a call, the other person will be unable to hear you on the other end. So at the moment, it's not functional as a phone. So pressing the loudspeaker button did not seem to make a difference, it just seemed that the call volume was very loud regardless of which device I was selecting. But the volume controls also did work. So we can see here that receiving calls also does come through as a notification and we can accept it from there 
and the call will be engaged. But it does not look like it opens the phone app. Still the same problem remains regarding the microphone and the audio issues. Spacebar is the default SMS app, and sending and receiving SMS seems to be functioning normally. So here I've received a couple messages, and I can send messages using my address book. And we can see that it does indeed get received. There is a recorder app by default, but again, this app also was unable to access the microphone. So I suspect that it has something to do with the hardware layer not reaching the actual microphone device. So if we look through the settings, we can also go to the audio sound settings, but nothing seems to be showing up in the microphone spot. There is a Wi-Fi hotspot feature, and this is also working. With or without a password, we can switch that on and then connect another device to the hotspot. And it was a surprising feature that's working. Going back into the settings, we can check on the Bluetooth functionality. I was able to connect to a pair of Bluetooth earbuds. So with the earbuds connected, I was able to test out the audio and see that it is connected to them. The audio coming from this video was functioning properly in the earbuds. However, the microphone still was not able to connect and I was unable to use earbuds as a microphone in phone calls. Here looking at the terminal app, it will function as you would expect a terminal to function. So you can run your commands. It does have tabs, which makes it nice to navigate around. And you can use the terminal to install software packages. Again, PostMarket OS is based on Alpine Linux. So those are the commands that you want to follow.
here I was able to install both graphical apps and command line apps. So the command line apps are clearly working. However, the graphical app that I installed did not seem to show up in the app drawer. So these apps are better to be installed through Discovery. Next, doing a quick battery check, we can see how much the battery has gone down with this typical usage, I would say, of a smart device. Lastly, I'll look at the weather app, which is quite nicely designed, and you can add weather based on location, and it works as you would expect. So there may be a few other features that I have not looked at on this particular hardware, but I have reviewed some of them on the OnePlus 6T, and this being a newer device added to post-market OS should be able to catch up to all of those features. But again, it is hardware dependent, and development depends on those working on it. So that's the first look at post-market OS on the Pixel 3a. If you have any questions about it, please leave your comments below. Thanks again for watching. Please do like and subscribe if you haven't done so already.